Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do something today. I'm not 100% sure what it is. She's going to explain it a little more in detail. And she is the executive and artistic director of, of Dance Entropy in Queens, New York. And this is a, a space where so much healing takes place, so much creative expression takes place. And it's great to have her back with us. It is Valerie Green. Welcome, Valerie. How's everything? Uh, everything's great. Happy to be back. It's our last session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> No, it's great to have you here and, and finally doing a video with you. And you had, just before we went on, you mentioned that we were going to do something. And I for, I'm i not sure what that is. What is that? Okay. I wanted to do a short experiential. Um, and uh, that means we're going to, we're just, we're just going to do it. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Experiential um, is experience. Yeah, I experience. hear that word. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, okay. So I have a little prop here. A slinky. Gotcha. Maybe hard to see, but so I'm nope. just gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move and play with the sl slinky for a second. And I want you, because it's only you, <laughs> to throw out words of what you think of with slinky. Flexible. Bendable. Mm -hmm. Open. Mm -hmm. Try, you should write them down. Flex, okay. Uh, I, I got them. What? Endable, open, playful. Um, let's see what some of the other words I might have there is changeable. Changeable. Yeah. Good. Maybe I'll throw in a couple. Um, expansive. Okay. Anything else? Mm. Um, durable. Durable. I like it. Interesting. So we could go on and on forever, but that's sure. a good, good amount of words. So we had flexible, bendable, open, expansive, durable. Changeable. Yep. And I think my my change my my changeable and your expansive probably in the same territory, you know, they, they kind of, uh, you know, because it, it changes shape mm -hmm. and uh, it's, uh, you know, expansive as well. Sure. Okay. So now we're going to take all those ideas um, and I'm going to invite you to just feel uh, your sits bones on sitting on your seat, feel your pelvis and feel the length of your spine. And I want to invite you to feel your um, spine as an anchor of sorts and see if you can move your spine in your seat with these words in mind. So I'll, I'll, I'll say the words and, mm. and I just want you to experience moving your spine, breathing and thinking about flexibility. You wanna mm. close your eyes, you can even do that. Feeling bendable. Mm. Make sure you're breathing, feeling uh, expansive in the spine, so feeling the length of the spine, feeling how the spine is changeable. Just keep flowing and experience mm. something playful. How can the spine be playful? I guess maybe in a way that it supports you when you're doing fun stuff. Yeah. And it's just for you to think about on your inside. It's okay. You don't even have to answer. Just how can my, how can I move my spine and be playful? What does it even mean? Who knows? Who mm. cares? Let me just be playful. <laughs> and then durable. How is my spine durable? Just feeling into that. Interesting. Seeing the images in my mind of the slinky and it being my spine, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of feeling. That's yeah, interesting <laughs> how that kind of goes together. So then you can let your, all those words float around at once. I'm just taking another moment to close the experience. And just notice how I have all those words wash over you from flexible to playful to open, expressive, durable, changeable, mm -hmm. expansive, how 
that affect maybe your mood or your tone or your breath as you find that movement in your spine? How do you feel mm. different after exploring your spine? Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, now you get to answer. <laughs> okay. Um, you forget your spine's there. You forget it's there and what it does to support you and all that it does, it is essentially your core, but we just, I think we take it for granted sometimes. Okay. Well, thank you for being um, courageous to go into the experience with me. <laughs> it it def definitely is a, a it, it makes you more aware of your body, you know, in what we just did. Different now too. Say it again. I cut you off. Is your breath feeling different too? Your sense of breathing. It does because I'm I'm because of the spine, and it's connected or it's next to your lungs, diaphragm, all of that. Uh, I'm I'm more aware of breathing as well. Great, beautiful, hmm. interesting. Wow, and is that that one exercise? Is that some of the things that? Do you do within some of the classes, workshops there? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to do another small offering of <clears throat> some of the work I do. Just a yeah. little, little tidbit. <laughs> yeah. No, super cool how it makes the, the awareness is all right there. Um, and you mentioned you mentioned the word um, courage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Love to dig deeper. So... The word or the idea of courage has been, um, it came up in relation to, um, as you know, we celebrated our 25th anniversary and I had uh, a student say, wow, that takes a lot of courage to have a company for 25 years. And I don't, I'm not sure why, but the word really struck me and I started thinking about the word a lot. Um, I, I think about, you know, strength, that's more of a present word for me, but I just started thinking about courage and writing about the, what courage means. And I thought that it could be an interesting topic mm. of what all comes under the idea of courage. So I wanted to share what, you know, the ideas I wrote about, and then we could see what we feel like discussing from there and see where it goes. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm looking at my little note card here. Sure. So I think courage means taking risks. Courage is strength. Believing in oneself. It takes courage to believe in oneself even when things don't go your way. Courage is resilience. And resilience to keep going even when sometimes you might hear the word no. Courage is confidence. Courage is to have boundaries to be disciplined, to be organized. Courage is to think you can do anything if you set your mind to it. Courage is to keep learning, to keep putting yourself forward. Courage is to be vulnerable and to see your vulnerability as your strength. Um, courage is to be present, to be in the now. Hmm. I didn't realize that courage was all those things. Got to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I think those are all it, what it means to me. And I just think it's a beautiful word and I wanted to explore it and, and bring it into a discussion. Cause I think there's um, a lot that I see courage as that we might not think about. For sure. Even the last, last one or the, the second to last one about being in the now being present, uh, Somebody pointed out to me in my journey two years ago that I never live in the now. How come you don't live in the, why, why are you not, why are you not living in the present? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she says, you're always living in the past. You're always living in the future. You are like living for now. And I walked away and I'm like, oh, okay. And I thought about it and was like, hmm, yeah. And that uh, presents struggles and challenges because if you think of the past, Sometimes it can be negative. It can be a downer. It can be a little depressing sometimes, depending on what you're thinking about. If you're looking at the future, 
that could bring on anxiety sometimes where you're just, you know, worrying, oh, how is it going to go? And you're worrying for nothing, actually, because most of those things you worry about don't even transpire. Um, but when you live in the now, it's the perfect. You're here now and and enjoy it. Um, but I guess it does take courage to when you have that other stuff around you to just focus on the now. Might sound easier than not to others. So I guess it does take courage. Yeah, some people are not in the now and they're defensively somewhere else because it could feel too scary to be present with someone uh, in so many ways. Like to to be present with someone is also to be um, intimate with someone and you can be distracted in so many ways and not be in the now and not be present because of fear uh, of just being in connection with someone. So there's mm. like a courage to be in the now and to be in the present. Absolutely. And, and that's not to say that we don't have some focus on the past and of the future, but if, if, you know, in a visual, it's more of this is the now, this is the past, this is the future. It's almost just little borders on the outside of it, but this is, this is the present whereby a lot of people make it equal thirds, <laughs> which yeah. can be challenging. Yeah. It's like, there's the past, the present, I'm sorry, the, the past and the future and the present is the now and just like to be here now. now. <laughs> yep, yep. In your journey, where did you get that aha moment and you said to yourself, and sometimes we need to say to ourselves, wow, I was good. I had the courage to do that. Something big. Anything stand out in your, in your mind? Is it, was it, would you say it was 25 years ago when you, you opened up the, the space and studio? No, not necessarily. I just um, always do like basically what, what I want to do and what interests me and what it intrigues me. So I don't even like go to this place of like thinking about courage or any aha no <clears throat> moment. It's, it's very organic for me. I think what this, this student said was like, that was very courageous to be doing this for 25 years. And I sort of didn't think about it in some way. It was an aha moment of like, wow, like mm. I, I, I think myself as strong. Um, okay. I am, I am strong and I'm also, you know, sensitive and I'm, I'm many things, <laughs> a complex being like all of us, but the word courage really struck me. And I, I kind of had the aha moment of like, wow, like that really did take a lot to, you know, like do all that I've done in 25 years. And I just started writing words of what courage meant. And it just was an interesting process for myself. And um, I don't, I know there's not an aha moment. The aha moment is maybe looking back and being like, oh, this is what I've done. Wow. Because <laughs> yeah. I also have a hard time sometimes to be in the now of, you know, what, um, I'm creating or doing or being in the, in the joy and the pleasure of what I've done. You know, it's a work, a work in progress for me to be in the moment of something that's, you know, great or wonderful too. You know. why, why is that Valerie? Is it because you're, you're thinking about the next thing? Yeah. I have a lot of things uh, in my mind at, at all moments. I'm operating. I like to say on money levels at the same time. Um, and so it's, I think, for all of us a practice to be in the now, um, but definitely for me too, yes. Uh, and I, like and I'm not- Conscious is working even as my conscious mind is working and I'm like, many things are happening. <laughs> yep, yep. No, I, I got gotcha. you. And I'm not judging. I'm, I'm understanding. Like if you have so much going on, when you have something happening in the now, and maybe it's something that you've been working on for the longest time, but sometimes you don't enjoy it as much because you're always thinking about, the, the next thing or how that thing is going to affect other things. And it's not that you're living so far in the future. It's just, yeah, this is coming up next. So sometimes we don't enjoy what's happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I thought when I was doing the brainstorming, I was like, wow, there's actually, it takes courage to just be present. Yeah. And that was an interesting um, part of all. And sure. Also um, I, you know, it comes up a lot about in, in the work I do on vulnerability and that it is strength to be vulnerable. It's not weakness. There's many people think 
vulnerability is a sign of weakness and actually to be vulnerable is very beautiful and I think a sign of strength. You said something before I feel is, is very powerful in that having trust in yourself, having faith in yourself, uh, it's courageous to get to that point, especially when we, we came from a point of not so much doing it. And now in your journey, you've gotten to that point where it's like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm actually okay. I'm pretty good. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we feel bad about, you know, going like this to ourselves because it's perceived to have uh, an ego or just, you know, it's, it's just not cool to do that, but it actually is. It takes courage to have the faith in yourself to say, yeah, that thing coming up. I got that. I could do that. No problem. We'll, we'll work. We'll work through that. Yeah. And also to, I wanted to tie in with the idea of, of courage is also the courage to uh, be in the process of transformation. Sure. Um, as um, transformation can be very uh, uh, uncomfortable and one can have a lot of discomfort. Uh, sure. And so some things that I just want to throw out there is like, can you be in a place of discomfort as a journey towards liberating the self? Uh, uh, and going back to being present, being pre present in something not being comfortable and just being in the discomfort to see what's on the other side, what can be learned from being on the other side. Uh, is one's discomfort a signal that something's wrong? It might be. Then it also just might be that something is new and different because you've never experienced it before. Um, if something doesn't feel amazing, does it mean it's wrong? No, <laughs> mm. just might be new and different. So it's an invitation to entertain that the doorway in is to tolerate the discomfort of something you have never done in the same way that a snake might shed its skin or a butterfly might come out of a cocoon for its own metamorphosis, to have the courage to be in the, I want to say the muck or the discomfort of one's journey. Mm. We've been talking about healing in these sessions to have the courage to be in the discomfort of oneself, to know what might be on the other side. Because on the other side is something that can be a breakthrough that you don't know about unless you have the courage to just be in it. Yep. Uh, absolutely. And again, you know, have the faith in yourself, the courage to accept that what's on the other side could be really good. And usually it probably is, you know, you're, you're going through something for a reason and you get there. So question, you said before that, having that feeling of something's not exactly right, having the courage to accept that, that feeling inside that something's not exactly right, but, but having the courage to, to accept it. How do you know whether it's your gut telling you that something is not right, or you're just feeling uncomfortable with it and you need to accept that? How do I know or how does Yeah, anybody... how do you or in general? How do you, you know, how do you get that feeling cuz you know, we're we're all creatures of habit. Uh we most people don't like change, they fear it. So let's say you're you're thinking about a change, you're going through a change, but inside you're like you you know, call it your gut or your intuition is saying, you know, what you're doing is probably not the best thing, but how do you disseminate that? Maybe it's just fear and maybe it is the best thing. Well, everybody's so different that a lot of times mm. people really quickly go to, it doesn't feel good. I'm going to go now, or I'm, I don't want to do this or, uh, ha you know, have resistance or have a no, uh, that's mm, happened so much. It's really, I think for one to slow down and to go back to the present moment. And to I was just, just thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. So like, connecting some themes here it's just to i think it's to slow down and be like okay let me let me breathe into this and see what's happening like is my defense of whatever one mind you know whoever we all have our defenses is it my defense coming up here that makes me want to hightail it out of here mm -hmm. 
situation, the moment, the whatever it might be, the circumstance, or it's about building capacity to be in the moment, to feel into the moment and see like, oh, okay, this feels really different. What's going on? This feels different. I notice my breath is shortening. I, I notice my stomach's tightening or my throat, but I'm safe. Like I'm, you know, I'm here, um, safe in my room. You know, it could be like, I'm just with Steve right now. Uh, everything's okay. And try to let slow down the moment to know like, okay, this is uncomfortable, but I'm safe. Let me see if I can just breathe or take a risk or yeah. do so many things, but we, we tend to move very quickly. Yeah. I love, I love that. And we were thinking the same thing and it does go right back to living in the present whereby you, you're going through something, you're trying to determine whether it's the best thing for you or you're just afraid of it and you kind of push it away. And it's like, you're in that tornado. So to try and just kind of step out of the tornado for a second and then kind of regroup and then maybe listen a little clearer because now you don't have the tornado of all the things spinning around and then then go with your gut then now you can listen to your gut what are you trying to tell me what, what do you got there for me um is it just i'm i'm afraid of a change and this is probably a good thing for me or is it the red flag from your intuition or your gut feeling saying mm, this is bad you might not want to do that but you're right you have to get to the center you have to get out of the storm for a moment and just you know, take a moment and breathe yeah yeah out of the storm mm -hmm. yeah it's um the present is so powerful <laughs> i don't think we realize it i don't think we realize it yeah it's 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 overlooked right <laughs> it, it real well just like when we talked before about the spine the spine is overlooked it does everything for you that's what holds us up <laughs> and it does it does <laughs> and you know what the present i think does in a lot of ways too it's it supports you it's because it's where you wanted to go if you came from the past you were on your way to the present so that that got you there but the present is the where, what where you wanted to be in the first place uh, and of course, there's things, you know, in the future that you might be thinking of and they're they're floating out there, but sorry to break it to everybody. Eh, it's not guaranteed. That's not you. You could be, oh, yeah, I'm just thinking about, you know, the anxiety of this vacation coming up is going to be great. That's all right. You know, get back to the present because flight could get canceled. That could happen. That not to worry about it, but it's not the, the future is not guaranteed. Just yeah. isn't. There's also that sort of connects to another little a quote I brought in that your destiny is a product of your own creating. Even when it seems like there's no room to turn, there's always a solution waiting for you. Yep. The only insurmountable obstacle is the one that you create in your mind. Yep. Totally agree. <laughs> like every word there is spot on and 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 one thousand percent true. And I think we forget that too. Yeah, we 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 forget a lot of things because yeah. we're we're complex beings. Uh, so that's why it's a ongoing practice to slow down and see what's happening with oneself. Yeah, and there's a a song that uh, came back for me uh, recently out of nowhere on a playlist. Probably nobody even knows this song, but the words are are spot on to even what we're talking about. You remember Jackson Brown? He's still around. He had a song called "The Fuse." It came out on one of his albums like 1978. And it's basically about the fuse is lit when you're born and the fuse is always burning. The fuse is burning and the world is always turning. And there's a line in the song kind of connects what you just said that uh, whatever it is you think you may have, you have nothing to lose. So don't worry about it. Do it. <laughs> Move your life forward. Um, and there's a lot of other metaphors and things within that song. But, you know, the, the fuse is burning. You know, what are you going to do before the, you know, it burns out, you know, have that courage to move your life forward. And I know that you work with a lot of people in, in your space, um, uh, that I gotta say, Valerie, that did take a lot of courage to create something within a dance arena, if you will, you know, with the umbrella of dance of workshops that help that heal might not be connected to dance in those workshops, but you're still doing it, which, um, connected to the body. Yeah. Well, you know what? It is all about your body, <laughs> you know, in, in all regards. Uh, and when we first met, you know, face value, I thought what you did was, you know, dance workshops, helping people learn dance, putting on performances, but so much more that you offer in helping people heal sometimes through dance. 
Yeah. Um, it's a, you know, I wouldn't have said that I knew I was going to have my journey go in this way. I just am a dancer, will always be a dancer. And the journey had another surprise for me that I think was always in my calling. I just didn't know what was in store for me. <laughs> well, okay. So, and we have a second left here, but you realized long ago that dance helps one heal through expression, um, just the feeling you get. And then your calling, it seems to be, you took it layers deeper in terms of creating a space for people to come together to help them heal, whether it's through dance or not. Uh, so your your student was spot on and saying, you know, that was courage <laughs> you to, to keep that going for 25 years. And, uh, and think of the impact you've made in, you know, two and a half decades on people not only just healing, but watching performances, whether it's in your space, whether, you know, someplace in New York City, Central Park, whatever it might be, you know, all of that, um, you know, inc inc crazy, incredible mark that that you've made. You really have. Thank you. And I don't know if there's a way maybe to bring it back to this, the slinky and maybe the, the, this is, if this is our form and the slinky is the form, can we as humans have our form, but also be all these things? Sure. You know, risky, playful, durable, expansive, resilient. So yeah. like not just our spine, but can we as a human be all these these things? <laughs> well, yes, yes, we can. And there's, you know, dance entropy where it was the slinky there, but then you went like this and kind of bent it over, you know, in a different direction. And that's what you did. You 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 pivoted a little bit and let me try this we're gonna try this i have the courage to try this try this yeah we're all about dance but we're also a lot more than that uh, we're all these things <laughs> all these things <laughs> we're slinky i always love slinkies i never got tired of them i would always you know back as a kid back up to the top of the steps let me see if i can make it down to the end the best is when your dog or cat is watching the slinky go <laughs> it's like what the heck is that thing um share your website with everybody valerie danceentropy.org yeah and it's also greenspacestudio.org yep and green space is uh another place with a lot of uh, amazing things happening um yeah if anybody wants to learn more if they want to support uh and just see some of the work you're doing go there and check out the website valerie it's been great talking with you learned so much um just even a conversation today you're <laughs> taking a slinky and what it actually how it actually translates to our lives and how we pivot and everything. Um, but that's why you're great at uh, what you do. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Steve. It's been really fun to have, have our sessions together. <laughs> Same thing. And uh, I wish you all the best there on the 25th and um, looking forward somewhere along the line. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk again. We'll get together. I am uh, literally uh, probably about 45 minutes away from where you are in the space. So maybe uh, right. if I'm in town, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to you. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.